Let's uh, let's also here talk about uh, the ESPY Awards. This is ESPN who give out awards every year to uh, uh, sporting achievement, but these have become over the years a lot more woke, and they were all in about racism last night. But as white people, this is the breaking point. This time, we've got to have their backs. Trust us, we know that sports are important. It's why we're gathered here tonight. But do black lives matter to you when they're not throwing touchdowns, grabbing rebounds, serving aces? If that was uncomfortable to hear, good. I used to shy away from moments like this because it's convenient to be quiet, to be thought of as safe and polite. Colin Kaepernick never shied away. He knew that discomfort was essential to liberation and that fighting the oppression against black people is bigger than sports. Rita, I love how important these people think they are. Like, I, yeah, like, I love... And also, what about, you know, there's a bloke who also was on ESPN who says that Colin Kaepernick should be nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, why hang. not? If Greta's going to be nominated, well, so hang on. Why what, not isn't it Greta this oh, year, Colin next year, all the rest of it here? But again, it's right, it, it's like, look, say whatever you want, free speech of the United States, but it's like, how far removed from talking about sport is a sports channel that wants to run stuff like that on its made-up awards ceremony for but sport? That's, that's why they have struggled uh, quite considerably, because they have gone so crazy woke that they have turned off so many sports fans. And I think they're, they're now going to do a whole 24 hours or a whole day on racism in sport where they, they, just, that's going to be the whole focus of, of their programming. I mean, a sport is, a, is an arena where uh, black Americans in particular absolutely excel. They dominate, whether we're talking about the Olympics or we're talking about professional sports like basketball, uh, gridiron, whatever. Uh, so to be talking about racism in, in sport... Uh, Gosh, I mean, really, and I feel for any member of a prof professional sporting team, whether here or in the States, who doesn't have time for this div divisive race politics uh, because they have to shut up or they'd be out. Uh, there's really no room uh, to deviate from this group think and this critical race theory uh, that's that's dominating so much of the sporting world. It's it's so toxic and counterproductive. But also, it's this thing, Mark, where this becomes exhausting for people who turn to sport or entertainment as an escape from the rest of their life. Now, people can be smart enough to be fully engaged and fully care about all of these issues but want to watch four quarters of football because it's not about those things. Or two halves of, an, of football because it's not about those things. It's why I like supercars. It's not about what we talk about here every night. Yeah, exactly. The, you know, in Australia we've cheered on thousands of uh, Indigenous and Islander footballers in the NRL and the AFL and other sports over the over the years but the one bloke who decided to introduce politics he became australian of the year and started to attack australia's origins and was a quasi politician well all, all like all uh, politicians who go to the footy he got he got booed <laughs> adam goods and when the authority said i oh, don't boo everyone booed louder of course because that's the australian way Correct. so you know the, the lesson for sports administrators is that people go to watch sport they're, they're on political lectures but the other thing we found out, Paul, you know, the, the lefties, particularly on social media, reveal who they really are. Every sports journalist, seemingly, is a frustrated politician, like those two Sheilas you showed from the United States. They want yes. to run for Congress. Oh, you know, you thought uh, they've, they've got the smell of liniment and jock straps in their nostrils, but really they want uh, the smell of power to become a politician. And uh, again, in, in Australia, the, the prototype is the red pirate who uh, obviously has been on the bottom of too many rucks from when he was a rugby union player. Poor old Peter. <laughs> he's barely got two brain cells to rub together. But he's got every political <laughs> opinion under the sun. But he's like uh, Van Osterlade. Every opinion's wrong. Oh, yeah. You know, you can set your clock by his errors. So um, they, they're frustrated politicians. They ought to stick to sports journalism. Most of them are not real good at that either. God so um, the it's, a, it's, it's a debacle from beginning to end. Has the pirate declared that Trump can't win in November, because I'm waiting well, for hoping. that to put that's some money hoping. on. Yeah, we need What's that. You let me know when that happens, yeah, because that's when I'm putting so, some money uh, on. Oh. So he's halfway there, Trump. He's half elected. <laughs> <laughs>